He opened up the third week of October, 1984. I was 28. The local hangout, that's what people always call us. When you get regulars, when their friends or tourists come down, they bring them here. Because nowhere in Victoria is like this. You look at everything on the walls, you know, so much, so much history. I, I grew up in Windsor, Ontario. I, my brother-in-law, is a chef. I asked him, I said, what does, what's the profession like? And he says, it's really not great. You don't make a whole lot of money, but you can see the entire world for free. Every single place in the world has to have a restaurant. So the following year, when I turned 18, I enrolled in culinary school in Windsor. They have food Olympics. But this was the very first time that they were going to pick four students to go as a student team to Frankfurt. So now I'm part of the four students going to Germany. And all of this through school. And the Canadian team, for the first time in history, finished second. Canada decides to send another team to Jerusalem, Israel. And this time, I'm winning a gold medal. Now I'm running this French restaurant, my first chef job. And I am now going to be a chef at a French restaurant in San Juan. And then I met this guy who ended up being a huge part of my life. His name is Joe, Joe Weisbrook. His friend that grew up since grade school was Howie Siegel that owns Palliages. And then he get off the phone one day and he says, he, he wants me to come to Victoria. He, he wants me to go and open up a hamburger place called Little Sammy's. And then I took off. They road tripped um, from California to come to Victoria. Little Sammy's factory was on Johnson Street. I did this for about a year and three months. I gotta go on my journey again. I didn't do everything I had to do to go first. I start walking down Pandora to get to Johnson, come walking by this place, totally boarded up. There's paper in the windows and you cannot see inside, but outside you can tell it's a heritage building. It's 130 years old. It's 25 foot ceiling. I've been here long enough now in Victoria, almost two years. There's no real dining. Yeah, there was only one breakfast place at the time. So like he was just like, it's time to have another breakfast place, like a local hangout. Like the stuff you see in, in TV, where, you know, jukebox and regular food. He didn't have like the name. He just wanted to do his own like breakfast place. And it was like really his own because he's done partnerships. So this was the one where it was like strictly just my dad's ideas and what he wanted to do. Howie, which is the owner of Paliachis, immediately I went to him and I couldn't finish the line coming out and he shook my hands as partners. Like they were like standing around like thinking of a name. And then Howie was like, you know, whatever you, you call it, John, I'm just going to say it's John's place. And then he's like, that's it. And then that's how John is created. I get married, I have two children. My son is 31. And I asked him, I said, you really need to take over for me. And he said, okay. My name's Norman, and uh, you know, I'm John's son. Right away, I'm named after my dad's favorite baseball player. His name's Norman Cash. And my middle name's actually Cash. Yeah, so he's a huge uh, baseball fan, Detroit Tigers. It is my, my dad's restaurant. This is like our family. I'm running it, but at the same time, I, I think that's what my dad's done. He was living upstairs in the office on a futon. He like literally lived here. So he was keeping the place up and running like by himself. But that's why when I say like I work all these days in a row and stuff like that, it's probably nothing compared to what he's done. Yeah, my dad's traveled so many places and he's had so many different experiences that you know, you, you tell people your experiences and that's the things that you share. But that, that's the magic. It's the staff. You get the center of people that have been 37 years. I have three of them. Deborah. We call her Mama Bear. We start 38 years in November. She's been here 37. She knows the people that have been coming every Saturday or Sunday. I really got to experience these, these people growing up with the kids 
and the grandkids. And I, you know, still here to see that. So it's pretty special. You have bonds like you have no idea. It is. She's been here 37 within a month of Deborah. Liz and, Liz and I are kind of like the last two girls standing. You know, we're the lifers. I, I've been in the kitchen. I, I know people, but not like that. They have regulars. She came to the front door and says, where's Liz? And says, she's in Vancouver. And she's like, okay, well, I'll come back and she comes back. Because you've been over so long, you get life that, that goes by. You, you see it all. Working with these amazing girls, we all became really close. And year after year, we went on and I had kids and they had kids and it became like a family. We were raised in Johnville <laughs> and every single person has added something to this place. But our main girls, the heart, the heart of John's. It was just a, a little unknown restaurant with a good vibe. You could just feel the potential right away. Plain walls, of, the paint on the, on the ceiling was peeling. It had no character. I mean, other than the magical room. This is a magical room. Look at the size of it. Ten years was all local artists that would use the waters to sell their snow. This one up top is a local painter from Victoria, Jack Weiss. If you go up the front, you'll see another two painting pictures, the real tall ones up there, of Jack Nicholson from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and Frank Sinatra. That's another guy that, that was a local artist, Lars Belmonte, and he came in and he painted those for me and how he has an opening gift. That's Detroit Tiger Stadium. It was tore down in 97. I was 12, uh, about five years of my life. I would go with my dad. Then when my dad passed away, I wanted to do a memorial for him. So I did Tiger Stadium. I got a local painter to paint me that. But he never got to meet my kids. So I put the kids on his lap. When anybody ever came to John's, they always felt like they were going to the rec room that they lived in back in the old days in the basement. That you put all pictures up everywhere. Da, da, da. And I said, okay, well, if that's the case, then I'm going to get this pine board. Then it started. So now you would get some people that would come to Victoria, lots and lots of stars that would come in because. You're the local diner, you're the hangout. You meet people that would come in and sign. So we would get Ron Perlman, Breaking Bad. He came for a week every day. I was partners with Jeff Cortnell, the hockey player. You know, you get to meet him and, and all the hockey people and all the friends. And, and Sarah Vaughn, a great, great singer. And, you know, to John, all the best. It, it really, that's how it starts. If I go to a special sporting event or a concert, I would always buy a poster. Then I'd try to get everybody I went with, just sign your name. I would go and get them framed up. When I get to the stage now where there's no more room, like we even have to go up the pillars. Now we're 28 years with it all like this. It's just full of lots of, a uh, lot of celebrities, and they're ones that have been here. There's lots of regulars and family and friends. And there's also just a lot of like, like icons and like memorabilia like just from like famous shows and those are just like signed pictures that my dad's had forever like that look back and have nostalgia but it's going to be a time where we're going to have to switch some of these out because like <laughs> no one's going to remember like the friends one over there eventually they're going to be like what's friends every time i bring up story like there's always a, a, a picture to go with it well everyone that, that comes in they're just like whoa so many pictures to look at and you know even if you keep coming like every week uh, my dad likes to interchange, so he changes the pictures on you just when you thought you knew everything on the wall. So it's like a fun pop quiz where like people will ask you things on the wall, and I'm like, oh yeah, I know what that is, or I can tell you a little story behind it. And then people are always like, like oh, that's so cool. And I'm like, oh, thank you, that's just our life, right? You gotta remember that if you've been open this long, you see trends in the business. You adjust. So about 10 years ago, everybody started to really watch their health. They wanted to buy free run eggs. Now, I never used margarine, which was uh, just me. Couldn't imagine. So that's when it says real butter and the soup. You do one meat and one veggie five days a week. People, you know, fell in love with the, the, 
waffles with cream cheese syrup. So you have cream cheese. I made a special up for a weekend. And I mixed it in with some maple syrup. Now it's a staple. And then you still get your normal diner food that has not changed in 40 years. So you see like weird names on there because there's history. Like Valdi's Frittata. Valdi's a uh, musician from Salt Spring Island. And he used to come in here a lot. He would always get his own frittata like mixing stuff, so we just put it on the menu. So the chicken burrito, we, we call it the Hudson Mac now. And Hudson Mac, he was a broadcaster because CTV's down the street, and he would always come in for lunch, and he would have it. He says, I love the burrito ole. So then eventually we just call it the Hudson Mac burrito ole. But yeah, there's a lot of history on there, like when you see like funny names. We have our own brand of coffee that we get roasted in Delta. It's at the front, so, and people come here. Oh, I really like the coffee. And then the servers, you take it back home as a souvenir. 2011, you gotta eat here. And we would really be honored if you wanted to be on it. And to make it even better, you're gonna be on the opening show. During the pandemic, we had to keep loose. We, we had to come up with these plexiglass. Yes, yes. But it worked out so good because I said, well, let's do it like the hockey boards. So now that it's over, it'll stay forever because it really gave privacy to each booth. And these are the kind of things that you just... John's place is so busy. The owner doesn't know if he could wait in line. I'm blown away of the loyalty in this town. And then there's a line above the door. And you just go, wow, I guess people love us. You know, just keep on doing what we're doing. Don't change. And that's one of the main things that uh, when I took over that I'm not going to, like, I can always innovate, but I always feel like I have a good grasp on, like, what we're about. And I would never do anything to take that away. I'm not going to change the name. I want to keep the traditions going. If you had a policy since then, you don't care. Because you have a choice to not like it. If you want to try something, they don't like it, they don't pay for it. It's always been his model. And he really just believed in his product, believed in making the customers happy. And he wanted it welcoming. Anything else I can get? No, I'm not really hungry. How about give me a dessert to take home? Everything you can do to make somebody feel that you care. And that's really important. And I, I, I think I remembered it because if you didn't like something at home, I was very lucky that I was brought up in a family that I could tell her without being angry, I don't like this mom. And she'd say, okay, well, what can I make you? The main thing is, how do you get welcomed at your aunt's house? How do you get welcomed at your grandmother's house? That family hugs you and I, I remember you. So that, that's it, you, you get welcomed into a family. Our magic happens in house. Like serving people and having people here, that was the thing, right? This is the reason why I stuck around all these years. And because he always believed in the customer. And it wasn't that the customer was right, it was about pleasing the customer. It's his passion, it really is his passion. You so you had that freedom just knowing that you're really here for the customer. And it was really like, that's so freeing. Here we can be ourselves, we can be silly. It's like a therapy, really. You can simplify it and just say, oh, all you're doing is serving people. But you're also serving an experience. And I really just want to have like just a little moment, like a connection. I want a connection, I want to do the best I can for them. I want them to leave with a, with a, you know, a little bit of a happy heart. I got treated incredibly by the staff. The food was very fresh and original. It was like being at my aunt's house. Those kind of things I love to hear. We've touched a lot of people. We're so lucky. It's a character. It's something that grows. It's like with your soul. You can't duplicate it. No name change. Okay, it's gonna be John's place forever. John will take very good care of the place. John could actually retire if that was the case. Hopefully they're still here in five years. I still want to be working in five years. I don't want to retire. It's a family place. Nobody's gonna love the restaurant as much as, as your own family or the bunch of girls like we were.